Okay, so this is the day two, and this is the question given the polynomial x to the power of 4 minus x to the power of 3 minus 5x squared minus x minus 6. So we have to find the possible rational roots. How we do that is we take this equation, plus or minus p, p times q. p is the factor of the constant, which in this case would be negative 6, and q is the factor of the leading coefficient, and the leading coefficient would be 1, so the factors of 1 would be just 1. So we take the con um, factors of negative 6, and we get positive one, positive over negative 1, 2, 3, or 6, and then over the factors of the leading coefficient which are one so one all of them would would be over one and so that would just mean that the possible rational roots are plus or minus one two three or six using the um synthetic division to determine rational roots so taking these possible rational roots we do synthetic division and since we know there's two roots we could have stopped at uh, by negative 2 or like once we get um, two roots but I just did it to show the work so we do the synthetic division so I'll do one that's not a root and is a root so for example 2 is a root so we would get 1 minus 1 minus 5 minus 1 minus 6 so how we got that is by the leading coefficient so we take the 2 we drop the 1 you times 2 you add this you get 1 times 2 um, well, and you get 2 you add this you get negative 3 2 times 3 you get negative 6 you add this um, 2 times se negative 7 and negative 14 you add this so negative 20 so that would be the remainder so that means that's not a root for it to be a root there would be a zero remainder then we can also take so this is one is a root and since positive three is a possible root you take three you do synthetic division again and you get that zero is the remainder which means that it is a root and the other one the other root is negative two because when we did the synthetic division we again got a factor i mean the remainder that is zero so that means it is a root so negative two and positive three are the roots rational roots so next, determine the imaginary slash rational roots. So for the rational roots, we can take a quotient of, oh yeah, I guess a, a quotient of uh, one of these fact or rational roots. So we take this positive normal and we divide it with a, a rational root. And so the answer would be this, for example, for the negative two, uh, the quotient would be this, and how we get that is these are the coefficients. So we have uh, instead of x minus 4, we do x to the power of 4, we do x to the power of 3. So we start with that, and then we have the quotient of 1. So we get x to the power of 3, negative 3x squared plus x, and then minus 3. And so uh, we can just factor this. So I factored out x squared, and then just a 1 from this. So we get um, x squared plus 1 times x m minus 3. And then since x squared plus 1 is equal to x squared minus i squared, uh, that's what I wrote it as because you need to find the rational roots. And then x squared minus i squared, the difference of squares, so property. So you get x plus 1, x m plus i uh, times x minus i. And then since we're just looking for the rational roots, we can, um, like, disregard this. So we get, oh, yeah, yeah, so we get x plus 1 equals 0, x minus i equals 0. And then if we solve for x, so we get negative i and positive i as our rational roots. And so this x minus 3, <clears throat> that was the other factor, the rational roots that we found, so we know that it's correct in that negative two and positive three are rational roots. And this, these would be our irrational roots. So next graph, so this is what I did. Um, there's, it's a positive parabola, so the arrows are pointing up. The roots would be negative two and positive three. Um, there's a local minimum at this coordinate. There's also a local maximum at this coordinate, and then the y-intercept would be 0, negative 6, <clears throat> which is actually not the local maximum, even though it kind of looks like it, but 
and negative 5.9 is the y so that would be that would be the local the local um, maximum and not the y-intercept and then the local and the absolute minimum would be 2 and negative 20. so for the domain we go left to right so we get since there's the arrows here it's negative infinity to positive infinity and then in rage we go this way up to down so we get and um, negative 20 is a y and then there's it's at absolute points we use the brackets and then because of the arrows it goes to positive infinity the end behavior is x goes to positive infinity y goes to positive infinity and as x equals to negative infinity y goes to positive infinity and then the local minimum i already kind of uh, explained it so there's a local minimum as x equals negative 1.18 this would be the coordinate there's absolute maximum or there isn't a ma absolute maximum because of the arrows and then the local maximum x equals negative 0 0.104 this would be the coordinate and the absolute minimum is when x equals 2 and that would be the coordinate so the increasing interval is whenever there's a positive slope so we see that from going left to right the if we first see a positive slope when <coughs> Uh, negative 1.18 which is here to negative 0 0.104 so from here to here there's a positive slope which would mean there's an increasing interval and then there's also increasing interval from 2 to positive infinity so the decreasing interval is everything else so negative infinity to negative 1.18 so as you can see it's a negative slope and also from negative 1.18 negative 0 0.104 to positive 2 so that's a decreasing interval because of the negative slope and then the next question is verify roots by multiplication so you take the irrational roots uh, x plus i times x minus i we factor it so we get x squared minus i squared and then we take the rational roots which is x minus 3 times x plus 2 we multiply and then we get x squared minus x minus 6 so we combine these two by multiplication so we get x squared minus i squared times x squared minus x minus x minus 6 and so we can factor this x squared minus i squared we can um turn it into x squared plus 1 and then this would be stay the same and this x we would fact foil all these terms and so we got x to the power of 4 minus x times x to the power of 3 minus 5x squared minus x minus 6, which is the same exact um, given polynomial. So we know that our roots are correct.